Hello everybody and welcome to another Shader Graph tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to take a look at this volumetric fog which uh, took me some time but I kind of figured it out which uh, you can go through and you can set a bunch of properties that I can show you now. Let's see, have, where does it start? At which height? And what's the overall height? Like the, the basically where, where does it end? And then you have the size of the texture and um, what's the size on the y-axis. Uh, randomness is just to get rid of the layers if you set this to zero you might see might see these layers let's set that back to what it was and you have threshold and a multiplier And we are using a 3D texture so that it's much cheaper than sampling uh, from like a noise uh, function. I have this one which samples from noise function. It's much, much slower. Um, and this one, well, both of these are, uh, they are only working on like a mesh that you have to put, uh, like a plane um, that you have to keep. In, in this area while this one it's a bit of a trick but it works nice I have this plane in front of the camera which um, has this material and it renders like this uh, I guess it it can be done using post processing uh, but that was not intuitive so I didn't do it that way I just did it this way all right so jumping to the shader I obviously cheated. Uh, most of the meat is in a custom function, um, but we can look at these. Uh, so we have a 3D texture and sampler. Uh, we have how many samples do we want? Uh, and it's a very marching thingy. Uh, and I'll show you what that, what does that mean in a bit. Um, scene depth, so that I can know where is where are the other meshes. Um, so we just uh, do I and sub subtract the uh, distance of uh, the, the distance of the mesh itself, the one that I have in front of the camera from uh, the depth so, so that we know what's the distance between the plane and all the other objects and we feed that in. Uh, the others are parameters for starting height over all height, randomness, and size, um, I'm just putting the normal size for X and Z, and I'm multiplying the normal size by this Y to size ratio for the Y axis so that you can control the scale on the Y. Threshold multiplier max distance are just going in, and max distance is, uh, I didn't show that. You can see there is, I don't know if you can notice it, but there is a circle in which after there are there is no fo fog it's just solid if i decrease it you'll see like this this is much better for performance um so going back here uh what do we have also the position is um just the normal word position uh, and i'm adding time multiplied by the speed to the x-axis so that the the fog moves and we have the view direction which is just normalized view direction um, this will output the fog which then uh, I'm using this color parameter uh, to lerp between the uh, scene color 
which is what's uh, whatever the, the the camera is rendering and between that color uh, i'm also using the alpha of this color to uh, subtract from the fog um, so that you can do this and then using that as the color so let's look take a look at this custom function so this is our custom function it takes all what i showed and it outputs a float which is the fog setting it to zero uh, this is checking if we are above the starting height and looking upwards or if we are below and looking downwards, then we just return with fog zero because there is no fog above or below. Um, then I'm set. I'm uh, checking what's the distance on the y between uh, the current position of the plane and the starting height, and the y distance, which is from the position till the end uh, of the fog, on the y axis only. And then um, this boolean checks if, if we are in between the, the starting and the end. Uh, then if we are looking uh, downwards, I know it's larger than zero, but it, it means downwards, then the distance to the start is going to be the division of the difference on the y to the start uh, by the view direction multiplied uh, on the y of the view direction multiplied by view direction uh, and this will basically give us a vector from the plane with the, the position of, of where we are rendering into the uh, start height basically right uh, and then getting the length will tell us what's the distance between this position of the plane and the starting position of the fog same goes for the end, but uh, for basically the end. Uh, otherwise, if we are going, uh, if we are looking upwards, we do the opposite. Um, so the starting distance is just going to be the starting distance if we are above or below. But if we are between, then it's zero. There is no starting. Well, the, the fog like is immediately in front of us, so the starting distance is zero. The overall distance is going to be the difference between the start and the end. Um, I sometimes I mess up the, the signs, so this is what works. Um, when you have a loop which has uh, a sample texture, I think you have to do um, a trick like this. Say uh, the minimum of uh, the parameter or a static number uh, so that it, it can compile this code. Uh, so it, it needs to know what's the maximum number, um, like just by using the, the a, a parameter it will not uh, compile. Um, what else? So uh, what I'm doing here is that I'm asking if the starting distance is less than the mesh distance this means that the fog is going to start before finding the, uh, a different mesh. And so we are going to have samples. Otherwise, it means that the mesh is in front of the fog, and so there is no fog. Uh, so we just assign zero to samples. And samples is the number of times the loop is going to run. Um, what do we have? So random is a random uh, float. Um, calculated based on the x and z of the view this function is just uh, I, I took it out of um, shader graph basically the, it's the same as the random node so we are calculating a float one uh, random and then we are calculating a vector three or a float three uh, random uh, and then so so I'm basically using this random multiplied by this parameter which uh, I think I showed multiplied by view and multiplied by distance over 10 or this this is what worked with to me 
Uh, and so basically this is going to be plus minus um, some value to the position that we are going to uh, unwrap or, or, or sample from the texture. Um, uh, defining some variables that are used here. Uh, inside of the, the, the loop, the loop is just from zero to the number of samples. And I'm checking if the fog is larger uh, than or equal to 4.5. And this is also just by testing. I found this to be um, dim enough of, of, of fog value. Uh, and it will basically break out of the loop if we are um, just dim, right? We don't need to keep on looping if, if it is like foggy. Um, Victor, Victor to add is going to be the view multiplied by uh, distance to start multiplied by minus one. So this is basically um, the vector from the the uh, the plane into the starting of, of the fog. And then after that, we are going to add view multiplied by distance multiplied by i, which means uh, basically uh, on the on the start of the fog and then the next loop is gonna go a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more um, yeah and distance is is I, I kind of forgot that to, to mention this distance is going to be the uh, overall distance divided by the samples uh, so that we have samples all over the uh, fog distance basically from the beginning to the end we have uh, yeah and here what i'm doing is if uh, the mesh uh, distance if there are if, if there are other meshes that are before the end of the fog then we want that to be the end of the fog that that's going to be the overall distance for us all right um, so that's the vector to, to add. I'm checking if it is larger than the maximum distance plus some random. Then I'm going to add to the fog. And that's what you see, like the, the circle where it, it starts to like just become regular fog. Uh, add some arbitrary value and continue, which will loop again. All right, so P is going to be our point to sample our texture and it's going to be the position plus this vector to add and the y distance is um, the current the, the distance between the points that we are going to sample and the starting of the fog and I'm using that so that I can fade the top and the bottom of like the starting of the fog and the end of the fog basically uh, I'm adding the random vector to the point that we want to sample and multiplying it by the size. And then I am sampling this uh, this point from our 3D texture with the sampler. And I'm only getting the x because I only need the x and I only have x value in the texture. Um, so this is float one, right? And top top and bottom fade again is the distance the y distance which is the, what's the distance between the point and the start of the fog multiplied by some value that I found that works fine and the overall height minus the y distance which is gonna give us the distance from the end of the fog and then every time this uh, I basically stole this from um, uh, a video from uh, Sebastian on uh, uh, clouds in Unity, which is a very nice video. Check it out if you like this stuff. Uh, which uh, you subtract the, sh the threshold from the noise and then you multiply it by the multiplier. Um, and this is our uh, fade from the top and bottom. And you do a saturate for all of this so that it's between 0 and 1. And you add it for all the samples. And then at the end, you do 1 minus saturate and the exponential of the of minus fog. Exponential just uh, makes the fog looks much better. Uh, 
you can check how that uh, calculation happens if you want all right so the other thing that i need to note going back to unity is that there are these two scripts and this one calls this one this one i also stole it here is the uh, from github which just uh, creates some uh, simplex noise and I'm using it in this script and this script has um, if you uh, when you are in play mode if you click the space key it will generate it will create a texture and it will um, what will it do uh, create texture function which would create color array create four noises and uh, um, calculate the noise f uh, in parallel for all these four uh, noises four noises because I want them to be in different scales um, and then I loop this is the, the, the loop that goes through um, the colors and basically get get me the noise value for each and this uh, this library gets a noise uh, value between 0 and 255 that's why I'm dividing it by 255 so that I have a uh, value from 0 to 1 and then I am adding uh, the scale the larger scale basically scale 1 plus the half of scale 2 plus um, etc that's to, to give more details and then dividing it by almost what is the maximum that can be so uh, so that it, it goes back to between zero and one um, and then i'm just assigning a new color to this value right and you can see also here uh, i mentioned here the texture format is r float which means we only have the r channel so that we can save some space and not uh, basically not generate a texture file that is much larger than what we are using uh, if you want a smaller size you can also use r half but obviously the uh, this this uses 32 bits i think that one uses half of that 16 bit and so it the, the range of uh, values between 0 and 1 are less so you might see a difference in the texture like in the, the end results basically all right so yeah after that you set it you set the pixels of the textures and apply i also have this function which uh, will show a menu item that if you click it in edit mode after you generated uh, noise if you click it it will save your uh, 3d texture to this file and you can find it here right all right so as you guys notice i don't monetize my videos i don't have ads on them and so i don't generate any revenue out of them instead i sell assets which the links are in the description and i'm gonna put all these files in um, a zip file and then upload it to each io so you can download them for free uh, but if you want to support me, you can donate in there as much as you want. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice one.